Yo guys, what is up? It's Teach here coming at you again with another video over on Ark Survival Ascended. And I wanted to show you the top 10 weapons that you can use inside of Ark Survival Ascended. Now these aren't just based on numbers, they're based on uh, different ways that you can use them. Anything from locking people in place, the amount of pure damage they do, the actual utility of the item and all kinds of stuff. Now these are the top 10 I have in my hot bar right now and I'm gonna show you Basically, I'm going to show you the best way to use them as well as when and how they can be used better. Now, if you don't mind, smack that like button, leave a comment below for the algorithm and then consider subbing to the channel. Now, these weapons are both good for PvE and PvP purposes, but just so you know, each some of them are more specific towards another. So kind of listen and determine which you think is best for you. But the number 10 overall best weapons is the torch. Now, the torch was actually one of the meta weapons inside of Ark Survival Evolved and not Ascended because they pretty heavily nerfed the amount of damage tick that it does. So I have capped melee and it still doesn't do very much base damage. However, it will bleed. I guess if you want to think of bleed, it lights somebody on fire and it causes them to take approximately two seconds of damage of fire. It used to be like five or six seconds. So they nerfed it pretty heavily because people were getting really good torches running up, sprinting, hitting you and running away. So it is still worth it in a pinch because of the amount of damage it can do quickly, but it's not going to be your main weapon. You're going to want to stick to one Scorched Earth release to the Flamethrower instead. And this is kind of medium at best nowadays, but it's still top 10. So keep that in mind. Now, after that, this one is more exclusively for PvP use. This is the Electric Prod. People do not use this enough. You can get these in drops for free and you can get them much higher than primitive. So you can essentially knock somebody out because a base damage one of these applies 250 torpidity to somebody. So I made, unless you are wearing riot, full riot armor, by the way, somebody pops you with one of these, you're going to sleep. So people, some people on this swear by this, they'll carry a riot shield and they'll put this in their inventory and they will riot shield up close to somebody and then just chase you because they have more stamina with one of these and they will knock you out using that. Now, the reason people don't like these sometimes is because they're a one use. However, you can instantly recharge it by having angler gel. So using angler gel will recharge these days. You don't have to toss them immediately. You can literally just go ahead and use them. And then as soon as it pops, you'll see what I mean. It went ahead and died right there. You just go ahead and put some angler gel on it and it will fix it up immediately. So there's, it's really not difficult, especially if you're going in the oceans a lot, you end up with a ton of angler gel. Now, next on our list, certainly the most popular PvP weapon in the entire game. Also incredibly useful in PvE if you're not using it already. This is the Bola. Now, the Bola is a very good weapon because it is something that will lock somebody in place for around 20 to 30 seconds. Now, the exact number, it, it kind of depends on what you're launching at somebody and what tame it is, because I know that you can, there are ways to change it based on certain PvP factors that I don't know if they transferred over to Ark Survival uh, Ascended, so I'm not going to quote that for sure. But basically the rule of thumb is you got about 30 seconds for locking somebody down in place. As long as you hit them, they will not be able to move. They can jump up and down, but you can get nice and close after bowling somebody and it's game over. Basically, as soon as you bowl somebody, it's a guaranteed ticket that you win. Or you can also use these in a PvE sense to knock down pretty much anything small, tame, and it, like Pteranodons, one of the best things that you can bowl in the game because you knock them down, shoot them in the head twice, and you've got yourself a free tame. So bowlers are incredibly useful. The negative, they have a big travel time. Really big travel time. Watch. So this is not a long distance thing. It takes a long time for them to fall, and it takes a long time for them to actually hit their target. So if you're trying to hit somebody that's moving or running quickly, it's difficult to do. So you have to be very close in order to do it. And you kind of have to load it up for a little bit of time. So that's kind of one of the tricks. So even though it is very useful in certain situations in PvP to lock people down, it still only ranks eight on our list. And coming in at number seven, and this is a partial future list, this is the Harpoon Launcher. Now, though it does not do very much damage, right? You can see it, and it's got insane drop for the bullet. So if I was to fire one of these, there's travel time, it's got drop. This is a more of a future usage, right? So this guy eventually nets are gonna release inside of Ark. Now, when nets do, this thing is gonna be broken. Why? Because you can use a net, turn this into a net gun, and essentially, take people down and tames down. 
Now, pretty much anything medium and smaller can be netted. And then also, I believe, unless they've changed it, you can actually get higher level net guns or these harpoon launchers that can even uh, take down and net larger uh, larger teams up to a Rex. I've never seen one that can actually take down a Giganotosaurus, but you know, it is what it is. So these harpoon launchers are going to be incredibly useful in the future. And those nets essentially give you a bola effect and tie something to the ground for a chunk of time. Now, nets are a little bit less useful than a bola because they can be cut using like a uh, anything that's sharp, I guess, technically. But uh, that we'll see if that actually applies. So next on our list, this guy right here, arguably one of the most useful weapons in the entire game. You kind of need a higher level one than a prim, though. This is the compound bow. This is you need to be a high level to unlock it unless you have a blueprint for it. And if you pull back all the way, the compound bow does increased headshot damage. You can see 524 per shot. However, the reason that this is such a popular thing, right? is you can pull back with a primitive one and do a significant chunk of damage, but it has armor penetration. So if I was to use one of these things, basically the armor penetration that I could get off of it is very, very nice. So if someone has a full armor on, I want to say it ignores around like 50% of damage. So like any armor. So if you've got a full amazing set of armor and I headshot you, you're still dead. Um, because most people aren't going to be using a primitive compound bow. They'll have like around 300%. So multiply the damage I just did by three, 1500. Nobody has that much health. So yeah, game over. Now it also bypasses saddle armor. So you can do to a capped saddle, you can still, if you have a good compound bow, do five, six, 700 damage a shot. So a lot of people are going to use these in order to do a significant amount of damage. Now on PVE, they're also very useful caving weapons because they can be reloaded so quickly. I like to use these just because I feel like they do a significant amount of damage and metal arrows are cost effective to make. So they're very cheap and useful. Now, they still rank only number six on our list. And then we move on to the tech rifle. Now, yes, this is an end game thing. And yes, it is useful in some situations and not others. However, it is one of the most useful things that it's good at. One, it will destroy structures. Right off the bat, it does a significant amount of damage to any structure as long as you are inside of about 14 tiles. The max distance you can hit with one of these things is 14 tiles. So if something is off in the distance, you cannot hit it with this because even though it might look like it's going to hit it, it doesn't actually go that far. Apparently that was within that 14 tile range. But uh, the, the shots of this thing only go so far. Otherwise, the you'd be able to shoot outrange turrets. And that's the reason that it's capped at the distance. So, however, this thing does a substantial amount of damage to any individual player. You can see that I'm doing damage right now, right? So sometimes if you have the splash damage, you do 16, 19. And if you hit somebody in the foot or body, you're still doing a ridiculous amount of damage. Now, armor will nerf the amount of your damage that you're doing pretty heavily. However, the splash damage will also be useful because you can shoot off to the side and still apply a damage to something. Now, it also is automatic fire, so I can hold the trigger down for a significant amount of time, just like you're seeing right now. And then off put about 3300 damage to a naked person. Or, you know, if someone's wearing armor, you will kill them with a full burst of these pretty much no matter what armor they're wearing. So this is why the tech rifle is very useful in PVE. It is not really useful at all. There's very limited value to having this in PVE other than it looks cool. That's it. There are much more effective weapons for PVE. Now, coming in number four at our list, you can see it right here, the shotgun. Now, this is one of the most useful weapons in the game, not necessarily because it's useful for PvP purposes or PvE purposes, but because it's useful in boss battles, because of the amount of damage you can do with a shotgun, right? This is a primitive shotgun that I just buried into this thing, so this dummy's chest, and it did basic damage of somewhere right around five, 600 damage per shot. Now, to a boss, you're gonna be able to off-put damage from a distance, so you can use some of the cheesier techniques like hiding in a corner and shooting them, with the shotgun now the negative thing is it's kind of expensive to make the shotgun rounds so keep that in mind but especially if you're aiming for the softer parts of creatures and any tame really 1200 damage is going to do a lot to you now basically you can triple that because if you triple that that is the amount of damage that you could do on official servers or on unofficial servers you can eight times that and uh, that's a significant amount per shot right so you can't complain. And because it actually holds its shots over quite a distance, 
That's why it's one of the most useful things in the game. You can see, even though that thing was a ways away, I was still able to spread shot some of it. So people are very, very, I mean, I guess, I guess people enjoy these more than you would imagine because they do, even though that thing is way outside of any shotgun range, uh, I'm still hitting it. So very useful. And uh, if you have a high rated one of these things, you can put shots into tames that rage quickly, like a Giganotosaurus or a Rex. And these things will do a significant amount of damage to those. So that certainly helps. Now, coming into our top three, right? This right here, the sword and the pike. They're pretty much interchangeable between our number two and number three. However, I greatly prefer the sword. So number three is the pike. Now, the reason that the pike is a little bit worse, in my opinion, is the speed in which you can attack. However, the pike has a couple of benefits. You can see that I can go from a further distance. I am about a foundation in a way, and I can still hit whatever this guy is right here, right? And you can see that I'm doing a significant chunk of damage as long as I am close enough to him. And the pike has a little bit of a knockback. So that's a huge benefit for some people because if someone's trying to chase after you and you're chasing them with the pike, not only are you doing damage, but you're also applying a knockback so they can't get super close to you. Very, very useful. And uh, in PVP, it is, a, it is a king because if someone picks you, you can look up and you can pike through their tame and actually apply the damage to them. So if someone picks you on a Pteranodon, you just look up and pike the character. Same thing with a griffin. You can just pike through the character. Now, though that is useful, it technically has a little bit less damage than a primitive sword. 1136, right? There's 2048. So basically at the same exact rank, you're doing two, I mean, two times ish more damage using a sword. Now, my question to people, yes, you have to be about mm, a quarter foundation closer to use the sword. But if you are able to hit with the sword, it does a substantial amount of more damage. Now, that did not, it was not a good English sentence, but you know what I'm trying to say. So the sword overall is a very effective weapon. Plus, if you were to take some of your focal chili or not your fo focal chili and then your Enduros do, you'll have increased movement speed and increased damage, which allows you to run just about anything down in the entire game and absolutely shred it. So I prefer the sword because of the damage that is able to do over the pike. But I know plenty of people that prefer the pike over the sword simply due to the fact that it is able to apply a knockback and has further range. But I want you to notice that it also has a little bit of a slower um, time that it takes to swing. I don't know why it feels to me just slightly slower. So the sword is my preference and why it ranks at number two. Now ranking at number one on our list, both for PVE and PVP, this is probably the trump all of everything. This is the sniper rifle. Now the fabricated sniper rifle has a significant chunk of damage that it's able to do. And then as long as you do not zoom in, it will basically be something that is incredibly useful at close range or at range. At range, obviously that zoom in factor allows you to shoot, but because of the weapon sway, you have to control it a little bit better. So that is very useful. Now in PVP purposes, people will essentially sit, lay down, do whatever they have to, and it will technically reduce the weapon sway. And you can also use a shadow stake to reduce, I believe it's like 90% of your weapon sway. So you can certainly make it better to use. However, the fabricated sniper rifle does break pretty quickly unless you have a higher end one. So that's something you want to watch out for. However, it is still the number one simply due to the amount of damage that you can off put quickly. Eight shots, no matter what you are, is going to do a significant amount of damage. So definitely consider using that. So even though some people aren't going to like this statement, the sniper rifle is the number one weapon in the game. Any weapon underneath here, if somebody is good with it, can be more dangerous than the sniper rifle. I've known people that I've played with on PV PVP official that use the compound bow and they will smoke anyone that is using a sniper with their compound bow because they know how to use it so well. I know people that use the sword and pair it with a shield and will run down just about anyone in the entire game and you have to use larger tames in order to beat them. And I know people for some reason that happen to be incredible with this and the run turn strategy. I'm not very good with it in all honesty because I'm not able to run and turn and quickly aim, but there are lots of ways to be good with just about any weapon in this uh, underneath hot bar. So. Yeah, definitely pick up some of them because they're useful. This one's the number one overall because it's the easiest and most forgiving to learn. So definitely understand that. And again, at range, it works because you got the zoom in, but at close range, you can also just use it like a shotgun and don't zoom in. So 
Anyways, hopefully this video helps you out. And if you don't mind, smash that like button, leave a comment below for the algorithm, and then consider subbing to the channel. All right, teach.